Hello, my name is Keshwani. It's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our English. We want to improve our vocabulary. We have we have we have had our lessons for 40 days. Today is day 41. Day 41. Day number. Forty-one. So let's see what we have for today. The very first word we want to learn today is arduous. R. J. U. S. Adjective arduous. What does it mean? If something is described as an arduous, if some task is described as an arduous task or an arduous journey, you might have heard of, it simply means it requires it requires a great deal of physical effort or labor. If you have a task to do which requires a lot of labor, for those of you who are who, 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 who are familiar, for those of you who, who, who are familiar, I can't speak today. For those of you who live in the parts of the world where, in the country where I live, uh, uh, where we build stone walls around the property line, and building a stone wall is a very arduous job, very laborious job. It's arduous, it's difficult, not because it requires some sort of a thinking or so forth. It's not difficult in the mental sense of the word, but it's difficult in the physical sense of the word. It requires a lot of effort. It's demanding. Arduous means something that is demanding. Again, not in the mental sense of the word. It's not, it's not demanding intellectually. It's demanding in, as in physical effort. A job that is demanding because it requires a great deal of physical effort is said to be arduous. And uh, you might have heard of an arduous journey. An arduous journey is one that is that is very difficult, that is very uh, demanding physically on, on the body. Another good word to know along with the arduous, a good synonym of the arduous would be strenuous. Arduous and strenuous are the same thing. And finally, let's move on. We're going to learn one more word which is related to arduous and strenuous, but, I, but I'm going to raise it because I don't like, like writing it down too far down. The next word we want to talk about is, as a matter of fact, we already, I already spoke about it, laborious. This marker is dying, and as always, we have to get rid of it. So we don't end up picking it up. Laborious, what does it mean? Lo, lo. Laborious. It means requires something that requires requiring a great deal of labor. This marker has also got to go. At this rate, I'm not going to have any left. Tomorrow is the time to go to Staples and pick up some more. Those of you who know Staples is. Anyway, requiring great deal of requ requiring great deal of labor, something that requires a great deal of labor, is called laborious. Not necessarily because it's difficult, 
Okay, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Because it is difficult. It doesn't have to be difficult, it's just tedious. It requires a lot of effort. It requires a great deal of effort, great deal of labor. It's something that requires a great deal of effort and great deal of labor is said to be laborious. The next word I want to talk about has absolutely nothing to do with being laborious or arduous or strenuous. All of those words have to do with difficulty in the sense of a physical uh, requiring physical effort. The next word I want to talk about has nothing to do with any, any of those words. It's a completely entirely different word. It's learned. Now you might ask where these words are coming from and you just as well because I have an excellent answer for it. Where are these words coming from? Out of nowhere. In other words, they have no rhythm or rhyme to them. It's, it's just these words that I've collected as I explained before over the years that I wanted to learn myself properly and therefore sometimes there is no oh boy, there is no confluence. Just give me one second, I'll be back. Not one second, when I say one second that means 15 seconds. I'll be right back. Confluence is the word. And the reason I have to leave the room is because I want to find out when did we learn this word because I do know that we learned it, confluence. And if you want to learn it properly, go to day number 9, day number 9, and you will learn the word confluence. Simply type in this tag, Keshwani prep dash vocab dash day 9, and learn the word if you have not learned it already. Confluence means coming together. When two bodies of water come together, they merge, it's called the confluence of the two rivers. Similarly here, there is no confluence of ideas, there is no confluence of themes. It is a completely unrelated word and, have, and therefore there is no confluence. Do you understand? Here is our next word. The word is... An anecdote. And... Okay. Anecdote. Noun. The reason I want I wanted to talk about this word particularly anecdote is because sometimes people leave out the nuance of the when they tell you the meaning of this word they leave out the nuance of the word and again nuance is the very first word we covered on the very first day nuance means subtle differences in the meanings of the words minute differences the subtle differences subtle shades in the meanings of the words. And sometimes when you ask people what, what an anecdote is, they give you the meaning of the word, but they leave out the nuance, the minute subtle differences uh, that makes this word uh, not as quite the same as... This is what I hear usually. An anecdote they tell you is a, a short story. Yes, it is a short story, but that's not enough. You left, left something out. If you come to me and you tell me, you tell me, Oh, this morning, you're not going to believe what happened. I was driving and I saw this poor guy on the bicycle getting run over by a truck. Well, that's a short story, but it is not an anecdote. An anecdote has to be humorous. Just because a short story does not qualify as an anecdote. And just because, just because a story is humorous, just because a story is humorous, does not make it uh, an anecdote. It has to be a story that has some element of humor in it. That makes you, it's not going to make you roll on the floor after you hear it, but it is going to engender a chuckle. Oh, here's a good word, engender. I do not believe we have learned it before, so I'm going to make a lot of it in my, in, my, uh, in my list here, and we're going to learn it one of these days, engender. Have we learned it? I don't know. I do not believe so. Nope. We have not. So we're going to learn it one of these days. Alright? Anyway, that was it. That was it for today. That's the end of our lesson. 
I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found it interesting. So we learned three words which are sort of synonyms to each other. Arduous, strenuous and laborious. Laborious, laborious doesn't mean it's difficult. It does not mean that it's difficult. Oh, I erased it already. It, laborious, something laborious is not difficult. It just requires a great deal of effort. It takes a long time. It takes a lot of physical effort. Whereas arduous, it, it, it's difficult because it not only it requires physical effort, but it requires so much physical effort that actually it's very difficult to do it. Laborious is not something difficult to do. It's just it's just laborious. It requires a lot of labor. That's what it is. Weaving, weaving a carpet is laborious. It takes a lot of labor. But it's not a difficult job if you know what you're doing. But climbing Mount Everest is an arduous task. It's not a laborious task. Even though it requires a great deal of labor, a great deal of effort, physical effort. You see, there we go again. In, in, we're talking about the nuances. So I'm, ter I'm, I'm trying to make you, make you understand. I'm trying to explain the nuances of the word arduous and laborious. Laborious simply means it requires a great deal of effort but it does not have to be a difficult job, like as I told you, like weaving a carpet. Whereas climbing a mountain, it does require a great deal of effort, but here in that context you would not use the word laborious, it's not a laborious task, it is an strenuous task, it is an arduous task, because it requires a great deal of effort to, the, to such an extent that not too many people can do it. It, it, it takes a toll on your body, it's very difficult. Anyway, that was it. And finally, we learned about anecdote, which simply means a short humorous story. Listen, if you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, I tutor for GRE, Gmail, SAT, and Profile. You see their website address is there. Or you can even go to kishwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. Tell me what, what it is that you need help in, and I'll do what I can, what I can do, okay? What, what I can to help you. All right? Thank you.